get what's up. Do you know that feeling that you're not sure how people play these crazy lines on guitar? Now, I remember very clearly um, starting to work on things with guitar and hearing these crazy guitar players and I was like, wow, how can I ever play that? And what I was thinking is that, you know, if I'll play something a lot, it will get better. And it's not not true, but it's not the full truth as well. And I want to kind of break a little myth about that. And for that, I want to talk about three very important guitar techniques. And each one is important to itself and the combination for me really does the trick. So without further ado, we'll just dive right into it. And again, I would really recommend checking out those three techniques because they're very, very important and they're all meaningful in different ways. So make sure to listen fully through. Thank you. All right, let's do this. One, one, alternate picking. It's almost like alternate side parking in New York, but it's not. The idea is basically like playing and alternate picking, literally down, up or up, down. Now, this technique sounds like this, right? It has a very kind of like a articulated sound versus a few other techniques that we'll shortly discuss. But I'm gonna give you right now three exercises for this technique, but of course, I would recommend you guys to check out the other techniques in a few minutes. Let's do it. Technique number one for alternate picking. So what I'll do actually every morning is I'll take the metronome and I'll put it on 40 BPM. Try to feel this pulse. I'll take one note and I'll subdivide it. Usually when I play this exercise, I'll kind of do it one to 12, but right now for this video, we'll do one to eight. So it sounds like this, and it's actually very important. I'll try to be very aware of my wrist. So pause. So when I'm playing this technique of alternate picking up and down, I'll try to kind of hyper aware that I'm using more wrist motion than fingers. Again, this is me and this is how I'm trying to build my technique. And when I'll play really high tempos, I'll start using some of the arm and the elbow stuff. But basically the idea is like really sinking in and really trying to make sure this motion is clear. Let's try it. So what's happening here is we're subdividing, we're subdividing the beat between one to eight, and I'm really trying to just think about the elbow, uh, sorry, the wrist motion here. When I'm getting to higher tempos um, with a click or a higher subdivision like nine, 10, 11, 12, I'll start using more of the elbow. And this is a really simple exercise, but actually super, super yes, useful, useful, useful. It's a useful exercise. All right. Two, and this is also something I really like. I'll take the metronome. Sometimes I'll stay in this subdivision uh, of 40 and kind of push it. Sometimes I'll play a little faster um, and I'll take one shape. Again, this is something I do every morning. I definitely like it. And I'll take just a four chromatic, four note chromatic shape. So. And I'll try to sync the right and left hand. Alternate picking. Now I'll move it. On one string. Maybe reverse. Maybe both directions. Maybe jumps. 
minor thirds. So what I'm trying to do here is syncing the right and left hand and I'll actually push the subdivision even further so that was takademi, 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 like eight but I'll also do the 12 and sometimes 16 so I'll really try to go and sometimes I'll try to go to higher subdivisions So the idea is even not being 100% accurate, I'm trying to be accurate of course, but I'm trying to sync the two hands as much as I can and make sure that I am as accurate as I can, but trying to get that motion and, and that sync between the two hands and again, keeping the alternate picking, keeping the wrist motion. All right, that's enough about the first technique. Now we're gonna go to the second technique and this is, if you're feeling this video is in any way giving you some um, value, please click the like button that would mean a lot and maybe also subscribe to the channel to not miss any videos. Thank you. Two. Okay, so this is legato and this is a huge one. I think with guitar, the alternate picking sounds great. Definitely like it, but also, right? It has more of like almost a horn-like sound when you play all these, which I really, really like. It's just a very different sound from playing alternate picking. Each one kind of separately versus legato. Again, it's just a different articulation. It's a really, really cool guitar sound, that legato sound. Um, just like different kind of color and technique and let's talk about what's happening there so we're gonna do two main exercises right now for legato first one is we're gonna take G major scale play it with the three notes per string we're gonna hit the first note and hammer on the two other notes extremely slow just kind of like making sure we see the shapes I'm gonna slide the last finger so check it out not in time, just like kind of marking the placement of what's happening. So really teaching my fingers where things are. And I'm also trying to be aware of the balance and dynamics of the notes, the other notes. So it's like, I don't want this to be crazy loud and this crazy soft. I want like kind of like somewhat balanced. So it's almost feel like I'm playing as much as I can all the notes. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play it a hair faster, so. And then a hair faster. And I'm right now I'm playing all down strokes here with my right hand as you can see. And the next thing we're gonna do is, again, play it in time. All right, so if you need a PDF for all these exercises, it's all on my Patreon, so please check it out. And what I'll do is, for the second step, is really taking G major scale and just really just playing legato three notes per string from each one of the notes in G major. And I think I would really first really kind of map out the notes as if you're just telling your fingers and brain what's gonna happen and repeat it quite a few times until it's a little more clear as a mental image and a sound in your ears. So. started from the next note so from a again I'm still thinking G major scale but I'm also where it's the Dorian mode sometimes I'll still sing G so so and 
what I recommend for you guys is just like to take this scale and try to play it really slow, really teaching our fingers where things are, really trying to have everything balanced, right? So the, the alternate, big, sorry, the hammer on and pull offs, we didn't do pull offs right now, but it's the same thing when you descend. <laughs> One is really tagging the information, playing it slow, and then going to technique number three. Three. All right, so this technique is really, really, really cool. It's sort of a combination, a mix, if you will, between the alternate picking and the legato, and kind of gets you the goodness in both worlds. Uh, this is something that uh, I found through a really great guitar player from Australia named Josh, Josh Metter. Um, there is this whole kind of family of wild Australian guitar players that uses this technique and Josh is definitely one of them and does it on an amazing level. And what he does and these guys are doing, it seems that um, basically utilizing um, both. So playing two notes alternate picking and the third note would be hammer on. So if I'm playing a G major scale, I'll basically alternate pick the first two and hammer on the next one. So so right now we'll do two exercises for this scale. Check it out. First of all, We'll just play that scale really slowly with that technique, right? So this is really one and, and it's great. I also do that every morning, different scale, different keys. Um, G is great, F is great, whatever you're feeling. But the idea is like taking these three note per string shapes and really committing that sound. And then also descending. really great it feels great the more you do it the more comfortable it gets and I would definitely play it with a click again so I literally do this this was in triplets uh, I'll do eight notes triplets 16 kind of variation on basic subdivisions in different tempos and I really try to do it slow and this is kind of the first one I'll just take one position and do it really slow until my fingers can understand what's going on because it's it's a new technique for me as well uh, I've been doing it just for a couple of weeks, but it's already kind of magical. So I really, really like it. I, I guess like I use it in a certain extent before without really understanding that I'm doing it, but now I'm trying to consciously kind of shift toward that more, and I think it's great. Exercise number two. So here, we're just gonna do also G major scale just for consistency. All right, so what's going on here is I'll take the G major scale and kind of ascend, descend from different notes. So I'll start from G. Slide here and then descend and then slide here. So I'm basically going over the whole guitar, the whole fretboard, just starting from the different notes or different modes, if you will, of G major. Again, I think about at all right now is a one big G with different fingering. So it would sound something like this.
Yeah, so it's, you know, it's a world of information, but I think it's really helpful to be aware of these three techniques. And for me, understanding that it's possible to play things fast, slow with different articulation was a big uh, game changer. And I think like just trying to understand the different techniques and different motion and taking it slow, taking it day by day and working on all these techniques little by little is really, really helpful and useful. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.